Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at a mouse from ASUS which appears to not have a great deal of ASUS tax. This is the ASUS Tough Gaming M3. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at a budget entry into the gaming market of gaming mice. This is the ASUS Tough Gaming M3. Uh, as you can see from the box, supports Aurora Sync and also is part of the Tough Gaming Alliance. This mouse at the moment in the UK retails for somewhere in between the £20 and £25 mark, so obviously if you can pick up a deal, I think at £20 this is an absolute steal. When you get closer to £25, there are other options out there which uh, we've reviewed previously, which you're more than welcome to check out in our playlist below. But certainly for around about that price with a Pixar 3325 sensor, which is slightly modified due to ASUS adding a little bit more DPI to it and essentially kind of overclocking the sensor, this is actually a really good alternative to some of the others on the market. So let's take a look at the packaging, take a look at the mouse, go through some of the pros and cons, go through the specs, and then we'll come back at the end to see what my final thoughts are. So first of all, as you can see from the packaging, yeah, pretty much what you expect to see from ASUS. Really nice packaging, and if you were receiving this as a gift, I think you'd be pretty darn happy. Obviously, like we said, it's got the Tough Gaming logos on there, Aurora Sync compatibility, Tough Gaming, etc. Moving around onto the back of the box, it goes into a little bit more depth about some of the specifications, about its ergonomic and lightweight design. Now, ergonomic, yes, I can totally agree with that. Being a lefty, this mouse is fine for right or left-handed people, and has got a slightly more ambidextrous feel to it than some other mice that I've used previously. And when it comes to lightweight, well, the opinion's out on that one. This one weighs in at somewhere around about the 86, 87 grams mark, so it's not entirely lightweight, but certainly doesn't feel heavy in use. It goes on to say about the rugged performance, which, uh, yeah, I'm not too sure about rugged. I wouldn't want to be using it out in the field, but certainly on the desk, it does track extremely well, and you've got DPI settings anywhere from a lowly 200 DPI up to a whopping 7000 DPI, which again, for that Pixar 3325 sensor, is kind of a little bit over the spec of what it should do. Normally those do top out around about 5000 DPI, so yeah, they've done a little bit of trickery to that sensor to make it track a little bit better. Also included, you've got heavy duty switches, so those of you that are into uh, rage quitting and things like that should be absolutely fine. The actual switches themselves are Kali switches, and there's a mixture of red and white plungers on this one, and it's rated for up to 20 million clicks. Obviously, as we say in every video, we won't be testing that. Also included is a uh, specialised tough coating, which uh, could well be marketing speak, but essentially the mouse itself has got a really nice surface to it, and has also got a UV protective coating to hopefully make it last a little bit longer. And certainly in the limited time that I've been using it, it doesn't show any signs of use whatsoever. Also, it talks about personalised play, so you've got customisable lighting with the Aurora Sync software. It is somewhat limited, there's only one RGB element on this mouse, but certainly if you want to tie it in with the rest of your RGB setup, you shouldn't have any issues, obviously as long as you're using ASUS software. It's also got seven fully programmable buttons, and also it has one onboard memory profile, so once you set it, you can store it in the memory profile, unplug it, plug it into another device, and it will retain your settings. Connectivity wise, it's a wired USB 2.0 connection and tracking wise, as we said, it's a 7000 DPI optical sensor with 100 IPS and 20G acceleration. So not quite as good as some of those 30G models out there, but certainly gets the job done. It's got a 1000 Hertz polling rate, as is uh, pretty common on this type of mouse. And also, if you want to download the software, you will need an internet connection, but these days, who doesn't have an internet connection? Included in the packaging, obviously, you get the mouse itself, you get a user guide, and also installation and warranty details. The mouse itself actually comes really nicely packaged with a tough gaming foam slip on there to keep it protected in transit, or if you're packing up to move somewhere, then certainly that will keep it uh, scratch free. So let's take a look at the actual mouse itself. And as you can see, the, uh, the mouse design fits in perfectly with the ASUS Tough ecosystem, and you've got elements of the logo itself on the back there, which does illuminate, as you'll see from some of the B-roll. Also, the top has got a really nice kind of gunmetal silver finish to it, and although it is a slightly satin finish to it, it doesn't show up any marks, grease, fingerprints, that kind of stuff, so that is a really nice thing to see, and it's got a kind of grippy surface to it. On the sides, we've got pretty much more of the same, so again, we've got this kind of semi-textured surface, which will give you pretty decent grip. And looking at the buttons, so on the side we've got two programmable buttons, so this is normally forward and back, or maybe drop weapon or reload, however you choose to use it in your gaming setup. The side switches are using the Kali white plunger switches, which are absolutely fine, and it's actually a really nice kind of tactile feel to them. 
slightly different click. The rear one has a little bit more travel than the, uh, the front one, but certainly they do feel very similar, although acoustically they do sound slightly different. Moving on to the top of the mouse, so we've got another two buttons. So these are for switching your DPI settings. So there's four DPI settings as standard, so you can go in and then choose those. At the moment, I think they're set to something like 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, etc. So yeah, you can change those however you see fit. When you do press the buttons, again, these are using the Kali white plungers on the top there. And there's quite a nice tactile click to them as well. There isn't a great deal of pre-travel on any of the switches as such. Although they do seem to slightly bottom out a little bit when pressed and there is a little bit of acoustic noise going through the actual mouse shell itself. Coming up to the wheel, now the wheel is a particular favourite of mine so we've got a rubberized tread on the wheel itself and a pretty notchy feel to it. So if you're one of those people that likes to have a notchy feel, again for things like weapon switching, that kind of thing, or just scrolling in windows, it's going to be absolutely fine. There does need to be a little bit of a harsher press on the middle mouse button. The middle mouse button is controlled by a mechanical sensor rather than an optical one and again is using a Kali switch in there. When we come to the left and right mouse buttons, again we've got a really nice click to those and these are using the Kali red switches. So really nice feel to them. There's no real kind of um, slack to the switches or kind of like a pre-tension to them. So when you press them they do actuate very quickly. and do seem to work very well in Windows and gaming tasks. The switches themselves, I actually really do like these. They're a little bit more clicky than some, but as you can tell, I really do like the sound of these switches. Moving right onto the bottom, so we've got four feet on the bottom in a slightly unusual kind of layout, rather than having a solid section at the bottom. You've got these kind of angled sections, which again ties in with the tough gaming kind of scheme. The pads themselves are PTFE or Teflon, so they should be pretty long lasting and do actually travel well on just a plain desk surface or even on a mouse mat. The sensor itself is located in the middle as you'd expect it to be and again is using the Pixar 3325 sensor. A lot of people have said that this has got a lot of sensor wobble or shake but there's none detected on this particular model, so maybe that is something they've upgraded from previous generations. Also on the bottom, there's a few other little style elements, so you've got the Tough Gaming logo and also the Tough kind of camo print on the side there. The USB cable is something which is often overlooked on uh, mouse reviews in my opinion, and the mouse cable on this is a very lightweight one, but certainly seems to do the job. There's no braiding on it as such, which actually I prefer. I do find that braiding often catches on things, snags on desks, mouse mats, that sort of thing. So this is just a nice good quality kind of uh, vinyl coating on there, which travels along nicely on any surface. So that's pretty much it for the overview. Let's plug it into the computer and see what some of the features are like. So if you've got the uh, mouse connected up and you've got your Armory Crate installed, now you don't have to have an ASUS motherboard or anything to install this. You can just install Armory Crate if you want to, to con take control of your device. Uh, if we go into device here, we can go into Tough Gaming M3. And then we've got all of our settings. So first of all, you're greeted with buttons. You've also got performance, lighting, and firmware update, which is quite handy to do. So in the buttons, in the forward button, it lights up and shows you which one it is. Again, this is all kind of themed in the uh, ASUS tough kind of style aesthetics. So you've got the, uh, the black, yellow, and white. So if you want to change your settings, all you need to do, so for scroll up, you can go in and you can choose the function. So mouse function, you can choose keyboard function, macro, shortcut, multimedia, preset input text, or you can disable it altogether. And again, this goes for pretty much all of the buttons. So you can choose pretty much what you want to do. You've got the forward, backward, scroll up, scroll click, scroll down, DPI switch up and DPI switch down and right button, all of which can be configured independently. So that's uh, pretty good. Lots of configurability there. And then we can go into performance. So this is where we've got our DPI settings. Now if you press the DPI button on the top, it will switch between the modes available. So as you can see there, I'm just clicking through. You can probably pick up the click sound as well. So again, you can choose these to whatever DPI you want. So I've got DPI 1 set to 400, DPI 2 13, DPI 3 16, and DPI 4 3200. Once it starts getting over about 1600 for me, I find I lose all control of the mouse. So I prefer somewhere around about the sort of 1000, 1300 mark. That seems to work really well. I may change that at a later date. You've also got options for your polling rate. So for a USB, default is set to 1000. You've also got button response. So the button response in testing is around about 10 milliseconds. So there is a little bit of a delay on the button response, but if you want to, you can actually adjust that as well. So if you want a slightly 
slower response, you can change that to 32 milliseconds uh, or keep it as 12, which is pretty much the, uh, the quickest response. Also as well, you've got angle snapping, which is enableable. So what you can do with that, if you're drawing something in maybe paint or Photoshop, then angle snapping basically levels out the lines. But I found the mouse to track very well. Just drawing straight lines actually works pretty decently. So yeah, if you want uh, straighter lines, either in the vertical, horizontal, or whatever you're doing, then you can use angle snapping to kind of level out your uh, angles as moving the mouse around for tracking purposes. Also, when going to lighting, so you've got four basic effects which are included with the mouse. So you've got a static, you've got a breathing, color cycle, and reactive. So reactive is if you press a button or do anything on the mouse which involves a click, then it will change color obviously reacting. You've also got options to change the LED brightness, so 100% or you can turn it off altogether if you want to, if you don't like RGB lighting. Also, you can just configure it so it works with Aurora Sync. So if you choose the Aurora Sync mode, it will then synchronize with the rest of your Aurora Sync devices. So if I go into Aurora Sync now, you can see I've got my Tough Gaming X570 Plus motherboard, the RGB mouse, my memory, and the addressable light strip all in the uh, synchronized devices. So yeah, that's pretty decent. We'll go back into the mouse. So last one is firmware update. So you can go in there and see if there is an update available for the mouse. So yeah, plenty of features. Again, this is all within the Armory Crate. You don't have to have an Asus motherboard to uh, install this, but certainly if you want to tie things together into a tough gaming alliance of components and peripherals, then you certainly can do. So there we go, there's a quick look at the ASUS software. So you, again, you can go in and take control of your mouse. You don't have to use it, you can just plug this straight in and use it straight off the bat. And obviously using the DPI buttons, you can adjust it to your personal preference. With it plugged in, as you can see now, we've got some uh, RGB illumination. I've actually got this on the extensions on my desk over there, just so you can see what it looks like. The camera doesn't always uh, show the RGB off in its best light. So we will be taking some B-roll of this so you can see it a little bit better. I think actually I quite like it. It's, uh, it's quite minimal. There's no real spill from it as well. It's really nicely done, the way it's actually integrated in the system. And again, it ties in really nicely with that ASUS Tough Gaming overall aesthetic. When it comes to the mouse itself, so let's uh, slide it around. So again, the Teflon feet slide around really well. There is a slight unevenness to this desk. It is uh, pretty wrecked now, so <laughs> there is a little bit of noise coming from it, but it does slide really nicely. For me as a lefty in the uh, kind of, I guess you would call this a semi-claw grip, actually works out really well and I can use my uh, wedding ring finger to actually control back and forward on the side. Left and right click just feels completely normal. Again, if you're a righty, then those are going to be absolutely fine. I like the hump to this mouse, which seems like an unusual thing to say, but the hump is in a really nice position. Again, it is pretty much an ambidextrous mouse. There is a slight offset to it, as you can see, for right-handed people. If you want a fully ambidextrous one, there is the M5 model of this as well, which is available, which has an upgraded sensor, a few upgraded features, and an upgraded price, unfortunately. But certainly, that may be an option for you. So all I need now is a Tough Gaming keyboard to go with this, and I'll have uh, getting closer to a full setup. So let me know what you think about this mouse in the comment section below. Be interested to see what your thoughts are. I think, again, for around about £20, this offers a fantastic value for money. And if you're upgrading from a slightly older mouse, or maybe uh, you've got a wireless mouse or a combo set, and you just want to get a little bit more into gaming, a little bit more responsiveness, or maybe just take advantage of tough RGB lighting, then yeah, I think this is really worth a look. So again, let me know what you think in the comments section below, but in the meantime, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.